Citizens speak out in countries such as Bahrain, Cambodia, Jordan, Libya, Pakistan, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, Thailand, U.S., and Yemen. People continue to express fundamental requests for greater freedoms and human rights as they demand that their governments act in the best interest of the citizens. Hundreds of professionals from the largest nurses union in the U.S. demonstrated in Washington, D.C., calling for a Main Street contract for the American people that would implement changes such as higher corporate taxation to avoid health care reductions in national programs like Medicare and Medicaid, which provide medical benefits to the elderly, disabled, and the poor. Speaking on Friday, June 10th, Thailand's newly appointed ambassador to Cambodia, Sampong Sangwanbon, pledged to repair relations with Cambodia, which had been strained by disputes over the rights to several ancient temples near the shared border. The new ambassador emphasized the two countries' many similarities and shared heritage, saying that his government wished for Cambodian and Thai citizens to live together in peace and harmony. Jordanians held more protests in several cities across the country Friday, reiterating calls for Prime Minister Marouf Bakit and his government to resign due to their failure to address corruption and put forward political reforms demanded by the people. During a funeral Thursday for a young young man killed by soldiers, hundreds of Pakistanis expressed outrage over the violence and brutality of the military as it was discovered that 22-year-old Afsa Shah was shot while pleading for his life during an arrest and left to die. Pakistan's interior minister, Rahman Malik, has denounced the killing, calling it unlawful, and the soldiers responsible have been taken into custody while an inquiry is conducted. Following a request from the Pakistani government, the U.S. has reduced the number of military trainers in the country, with various media reporting that the goal of leaving fewer than 40 of an original 130 personnel has been nearly achieved. The U.N. announced Friday that between 30,000 to 40,000 people fled the town of Kadugli in Sudan's oil-producing state of southern Kordofan, with aid agencies in the area estimating that 146,000 have been recently displaced due to conflict in the border region between northern and southern Sudan. The U.N. Security Council expressed deep concern about the violence as it spoke out against the forceful actions of the north that have caused tens of thousands to flee their homes. Meanwhile, three people were reported to have died Friday when northern forces bombed another disputed area. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and the international community welcomed a Ugandan-mediated accord in Somalia that will extend the transitional government and its job until elections can be held in August 2012. However, hundreds of civilians and government soldiers demonstrated in the streets on Thursday, June 9th, protesting a clause in the accord that stated Prime Minister Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed Musko. A week after approving the return to Bahrain of the Formula One, or F1, race this autumn, the governing body's chief, Bernie Eccleston, announced that the race is being canceled in response to a protest by F1 drivers, who sent a letter objecting to the decision to participate. Global Citizens Activist Group, Avaz.org, had also sent a petition containing 450,000 signatures calling for the cancellation of the race due to the government's human rights abuses. Five Saudi Arabian women were arrested Thursday as they were practicing driving on an empty lot a week ahead of a planned protest by women demanding their rights to drive. On Friday, Libyan government troops attacked Miserata, killing at least 22 citizens and wounding 60 others. North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO airstrikes, continued to shake Libya's capital Tripoli as Senegalese President Abdullah Awad appealed to Colonel Muammar Gaddafi to step down and offered help in doing so. As UN Security Council members on Friday discussed a resolution that would speak out against the Syrian government's crackdown, Russian Special Envoy Mikhail Margolov pledged separately to mediate Syrian peace, saying he planned to meet the country activists soon. Also on Friday, at least 28 citizens were killed when government forces opened fire on pro-democracy protesters, making fresh calls for the resignation of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad in cities like Busra al-Harir, Damascus, and Marad al numa Meanwhile, a second teenage boy's lifeless and allegedly tortured body was returned to his parents, further uniting activists and protests over the brutal crackdown on Syrian citizens. In sorrowful prayers for the lives lost and suffering still being endured, we pray for all conflicts to cease so that global citizens may choose to live side by side in dignified harmony, peace and freedom.